For a long while, philosophy of religion has been um, almost dead within philosophy. So philosophy departments will not typically look at religious questions. That has been true, particularly in the 40s and 50s and perhaps 60s. But it has massively come back. Um, you know, Richard Swinburne, Alvin Plantinger have started to do a lot in that field. And ever since, uh, it has been almost exploding. And now philosophers are looking at very uh, theological questions, questions that typically only theologians would tackle. So looking even at questions like atonement or religious experience um, or um, even Christology. So um, one might sometimes wonder whether they overstep the boundaries of their own discipline that way. But um, philosophy of miracles um, is one point in case and I here think um, it is not overstepping a boundary but indeed um, looking at something that is important from both sides. How so? Um, miracles in religions are there to authenticate um, a revelation. So for example a prophet. A prophet will have a message that cannot yet be verified because it is about something in the future. So how do we know that the prophet is right? If the prophet can work a miracle that proves that God is with him because only a God can work this kind of miracle for him, um, then we might have evidence to believe uh, in whatever he has revealed as a message. And so uh, that is something we can find in religions uh, just generally. And in order for a miracle to do its job, therefore, it has to be visible to somebody who does not yet believe. So it, if a miracle authenticates somewhat, something for someone who does not yet believe, uh, he must be able to see it, so to speak, with a naked eye, the, just pure reason, not with faith. Mm -hmm. Often, you know, Christians can say, um, well, I believe in Jesus and so I have no problems believing in miracles too. That is, of course, true, but that sort of misses the point. Mm -hmm. When Jesus says, if you don't believe me, at least believe the works that I am doing. Uh, so he appeals to non-believers you know, and he appeals to them by the works that is by the miracles that he is working and so that illustrates um, the role that miracles play and therefore there's good reason for a philosopher to look at these kind of claims a philosopher more generally cannot exclude any kind of evidence we are thinking about as metaphysicians for example about being or well, everything that is therefore falls into the the horizon of what philosophy discusses and analyzes. And so if we have evidence for miracles, we must look at that as well. And we can critically assess whether miracles can do the job that they do. And of course, there have been many questions about that and many skeptical arguments and those need to be engaged. And <clears throat> these range from questions of metaphysics, how can God work miracles? Can God break the laws of nature, for example? Um, what are our presuppositions about who God is, if we say that? Um, these would be questions then of metaphysics, but then also already reaching into questions of philosophy of nature, causality, what is a law of nature. There are questions of epistemology, even if miracles have happened, even if miracles can happen, can we know that they did actually happen? And there are famous arguments to the contrary by David Hume that need to be addressed and um, they can be uh, quite well addressed, I believe. Um, there are questions about um, is it even moral for God to work miracles or to interfere? Mm -hmm. Ultimately, I think it, has, uh, it is very important just to understand who God is. So even for believers, um, there is something we can prove about God by reason alone. We can prove the existence of God. We can prove many aspects of the nature of God. Um, but what we can see in miracles, if the evidence holds up, 
as a God who is personally interested in us, who is willing to enter history, who is willing to reach in the way all the way uh, through all the levels of reality to the very um, bottom and to the very um, physical phenomena of reality to make himself known to us. It is a God who cares, a God who is a personal God, a God who wants a personal encounter with us. And that is certainly something that especially Christians believe. Christians, more than any other religion, actually relies on miracles. Christianity is built on a miracle, namely the resurrection. If there cannot be evidence for miracles that are philosophically um, can be philosophically vindicated, then there cannot be evidence for Christianity. So we should take this very seriously, and we see here the importance that philosophy plays for theology and theological claims. So I think it is actually a key topic to investigate. And the church um, has always done that. So the church uh, is not just um, claiming miracles. The church is typically rather skeptical about miracles. So in principle, the church affirms, the First Vatican Council, for example, um, that uh, miracles are possible and that God actually has worked them. But when it comes to particular claims, uh, claims of private revelation, um, claims of, let's say, Marian apparitions or Eucharistic miracles, the Church acts with great circumspection and great skepticism and will employ uh, scientists to investigate the data. And uh, a number of these scientists are atheists and very intentionally chosen from skeptics and atheists because, again, it must be visible to um, the eye that is not yet uh, sort of instructed by faith or is not yet convinced by it. And so that is why the Church acknowledges very few miracles, um, including healing miracles in Lourdes. There have been so many thousands of them, yet the Church only has acknowledged quite a few of them because uh, the evidence um, was clear only in those cases. All of this illustrates uh, a dialectic of faith and reason. So faith um, must rely on reason and reason that is operating on its own principles independently from faith in order to authenticate it. Otherwise, faith becomes indistinguishable from superstition. So you need a reality check of that sort. All of which is again to say that it's very important to have a philosophical look at miracles, the possibility, the evidence for the actuality, um, which is by its nature a very complex topic because it reaches into so many realms from metaphysics to causality to laws of nature to philosophy of science to historiography to epistemology. Um, and so many topics can be um, interestingly investigated and um, actually help us even to think more deeply about all these subject matters by looking at such a complex topic.